Durian Heat, bringing big ideas and critical opinions in Southeast Asia. Hey, this is Arlin and you are with the Durian Heat and of course you are with me uh, on a topic that is very, very interesting. I'm speaking with... Uh, the curator, if I'm mistaken, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he will clarify it later. Uh, of TEDx KL, he also uh, monitors uh, other TEDx in Malaysia and also in Southeast Asia. Welcome, Daniel. How are you? Hey, thanks for having me. So you are the curator, and um, yeah, founding curator. Founding together. curator. So explain more about TEDx. What is the difference between TEDx and TED Talk and Whatever. <laughs> well, so TED is this. Uh, it, it's, that started of uh, this gathering by Richard Wilman in uh, 1984. It's essentially a, a dinner where they he invite close friends, and that sort of grew into this uh, conference called TED, which is Technology, Entertainment, and Design. I see. It's nothing to do with the movie, right? Nothing to do with the movie at all. <laughs> yeah. So, and uh, a couple of years back, um, Chris Anderson. Mm-hmm. Uh, took over as a curator of that and he did two very interesting things one there was uh, over 20 years of this archive like there was demonstration of the mouse there was all these very old videos he decided to put it online he put, put mm-hmm. it over on YouTube and that generate a lot of following and uh, people who do not know what TED is because uh, TED is usually this really exclusive conference where uh, a lot of technoratis and a lot of uh, Elites over in US will gather to share ideas, and the world found about that. And there was one key incident uh, essentially happened in Tokyo where uh, there was a group of people gathered to watch uh, TED videos. Oh, yeah, and uh, there were the group actually had about 500 people watching TED videos. Wow! So TED took notice of this and decided to hey let's let's find a way to actually leverage on this. And launch the TEDx program basically. Yeah. And TEDx or oh, the TED, uh, the TED Talk, right? It's very strict in a way that the way you control the speakers, uh, the way that you try to remove all forms of branding or self bragging. I would say, uh, you try to focus on the idea. But uh, why why it is important for TED TED Talk to focus on ideas only, and what kind of impact that they envision? Well, 18 minutes is not long to speak. <laughs> And you can spend a lot of time bragging about uh, your achievement and etc. But I think the main point is the attention span. 18 minutes is actually uh, structured that we we have a certain amount of attention span. And mm-hmm. between 10 minutes to 18 minutes, you want to go and drive through one key idea at least, basically. And mm-hmm. that is something that we we take a lot of uh, effort in terms of crafting the presentation. Mm-hmm. So the presenters can actually showcase one key idea or, or a at least drive through one or two key ideas in the short amount of time. Oh, that's very, very interesting. In fact, I have to admit to you that um, a couple of years ago when this TED Talk thing started to grow in terms of its influence, I watch it almost every day, all the videos, because they cover almost everything. And, and it's, it's, it's interesting to see like uh, politician, normal people, ordinary people, uh, artists, and a few, I mean, people in different uh, sectors talking about ideas that you never thought, uh, you know, this is actually... Um, Either it exists or, or it's there, you know, out there people are actually talking about it. Um, but going back to Malaysia, how did TEDx uh, come to Malaysia? Uh, basically, when they launched the license, uh, I was actually reached out by a friend that said, like, uh, we we are doing this. Uh, would you want to be part of it? And So you were offered? Uh, invited. <laughs> invited. <laughs> and uh, so TEDx Care was the number 36 license in the world in the world wow uh, so we we got in very early on and uh, we helped to grow uh, and shape what TEDx is uh, in the region and globally basically yeah. so is it anything different from TED Talk or you try to make it more we, m- Malaysian more, flavored it's more Malaysian flavored it's more uh, capturing the local ideas and local concepts uh, with uh, an eye on the world but I- even with TED, uh, we actually borrow their format, we borrow their their branding and etc. It's something that we license from them. And so we, we use that way to actually come up with uh, different, showcase different ideas mm-hmm. and different individuals from Malaysia. Oh, I see. Um, so, for Malaysia, right, 
you first started in KL, but now it's like all over Malaysia. Well, we are still in KL <laughs> only, uh, <laughs> but there's actually about 57 different TEDx licenses all around uh, Malaysia. Wow. And globally, uh, we have uh, 120,000 licenses around. Uh, globally, 100 something and Malaysia. 30,000. Oh, thousand. Yes. Wow. Um, and because there's just so many topics that are being discussed, how do you actually try to condense and try to make sense that, okay, we only talk about this, 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 but not that, that, that. How do you I think at the end the of the day, it's really about uh, discovery. And for us, we want to be a discovery platform for Malaysians to discover new ideas or new individuals or people are doing amazing things. So we do a lot of uh, research. So uh, sometimes it's a multi-year research. In really? Of, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, wh- what what are the interesting ideas that you know were discussed in TEDx Malaysia? Um, some of it, like uh, we will this year, we actually had this guy Tommy Lee. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, sorry, Tommy Tan. <laughs> and, uh, Tom- Not Tommy Lee Jones, right? No, no, no. Uh, that's uh, Tommy Lee was another presenter last year. Sorry. I see. <laughs> and Tommy Tan was actually touching on the idea of uh, the the stigma of breastfeeding in public in Malaysia. Mm. So uh, also we had uh, Anne Koo last year who was basically talking about uh, like mental disability and how there's n- not an acceptance in terms of the workplace, although they can be like perfectly contributing to society. Mm-hmm. Ex- explain more about those two speakers. Why they? W- I mean, why their topic was so interesting? So, and for example, mm-hmm. she's uh, she has Tourette syndrome, so she has this uh, uncontrollable verbal tic that she will all of a sudden blurt out uh, uh-huh. some foul language and etc. There's there's a lot of uh, organizations in Malaysia oh, and also globally. Almost all of it. <laughs> and also globally, actually. Mm-hmm. There are not acceptance in terms of that, but she's really brilliant. She's mm-hmm. actually, um, she's a brilliant digital marketer. I uh, see. And she can perform and she actually outperforms a lot of people. Yet because of this tiny, uh, tiny disability, there's this whole perception about uh, p- people would not hire her. Oh, okay. I think I think it makes sense in Malaysia because when it, you talk about disabilities, people with disabilities, um, Malaysians generally they don't really give that much priority. You know. Uh, on the other hand, you also talk about uh, the issue of breastfeeding, which I think is kind of controversial in Malaysia. Yeah, I mean, breastfeeding is this whole natural thing. Mm. Uh, we've we've been doing it <laughs> since the dawn of time, actually. <laughs> Man <I> mean, <laughs> human. <laughs> human. <laughs> we've been doing it since the dawn of time. And uh, but that's that's uh, Tom, Tommy actually uh, the 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 genesis of his uh, crusade to actually promote breastfeeding was the fact that he actually walked into a closet and to uh, get some supplies and then his boss was there wow. breastfeeding <laughs> and he just stood there and stared and he was wondering why don't we actually have uh, it, it was just basically a question that he's uh, why don't we have proper places to actually uh, uh, get people to breastfeed and like, what are the general etiquettes because there are people who uh, people who go to restaurants there, there are women uh, who are breastfeeding in a restaurant and the restaurant staff will always ask them oh can you go, go to the toilet and breastfeed and then, so he wants to create an environment in Malaysia that is mm. breast feeding friendly I see so you have a lot of uh, semi-controversial plus very interesting topics that we seldom talk in Malaysia but what are the no-go uh, areas that you you would not want to touch on uh, besides uh, self bragging you know, for well there's for a def- the, the definite no go is basically about uh, pseudo scientific talks basically mm-hmm. whenever we put any talks that are scientifically uh, related on stage we have to vet that they are actually properly pu- uh, published that is actually have a sound scientific back- backing on it so that means vaping will not be a topic anytime soon until no vaping if that's uh, if Vaping can be a proper research. I'm, I'm talking about like uh, uh, chakra healing. Oh yeah, those, oh yeah, yeah those, those kind of pseudo those, science. Yeah, those woo, uh, a bit woo that you can't quantify. You can't mm, quantify it. So we would not. We never touch about that mm. basically. So y- you would. Um, so that means topics like vaping, you would still be. Yeah, why not? Uh, yeah, because nowadays you you actually have articles from two sides of the argument, like whether it's harmful or not harmful but I think it's too early to tell anyway yeah it's definitely too early to yeah. tell my uh, own opinion In but uh, at the end of the day for any scientific topic you need to look at the data whether data is replicatable whether mm-hmm. there's any biases in terms of the researcher so we, we take those stuff in consideration in, uh, whenever we present any uh, scientific topic on stage mm-hmm. besides pseudoscience I think probably everyone knows what 
it's all about. <laughs> what about religion? Uh, yeah, religion is a bit weird. Um, it's not that we will not touch on religion, but we do not want someone to uh, go there and preach religion. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we respect in terms of religious belief and etc. So uh, there's actually a interesting topic in TED that uh, talk about uh, death, mm-hmm. uh, like that, that as, and it touches on religion. So that, in terms of what people think about uh, death. Based on different uh, perception on religion, mm-hmm. but we will not go in. We will not go into the thing on uh, talking about religious uh, practices or. Mm. Uh, but have religion. you ever have any speakers talk about religion in Malaysia? Um, not uh, not yet. Uh, we have people who we are presenters who are very religious, <laughs> but we don't. Ha- we do not have uh, presenters that uh, talk about religion. What about race? Race is some, race is something that we want to find a nice angle to talk to. Mm-hmm. It's it's not it's uh. So like I'm Chinese, you're yeah, Indian, and yeah, because that's <laughs> so, that's so boring, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's too boring. Yeah, we, we can. I I mean, uh, uh, there's a recent uh notion about a uh, recent study about stereotype basically, ah. and I I would like someone to really talk about that because that no matter if we think we are not racially biased, but that's all. Even we understand the stereotype, we somehow react to that stereotype. Mm. Because psychologically, we are actually like certain stereotype works in that favor. For example, if we have a stereotype of uh, a doctor uh, or a policeman, so we know in a general construct without asking them, this is how we behave with a doctor. This is how we believe with a policeman. This is how we believe. Uh, but sometimes stereotype translate into race or yeah. different thing, and that doesn't translate well. So I, I, if someone can touch about that topic, I will be glad to actually. Uh, th- that's an interesting point that you raised out about race. Yeah, they will be great. Anyway, we'll take one short break. When we return, we'll discuss more on TEDx and also things that are the challenges that they face, you know, in TEDx. You're now listening to Durian ASEAN, the voice of discovery and sharing. The Durian Heat, bringing big ideas and critical opinions in Southeast Asia. Hey, this is Arlene. You're back again with me and, of course, with Daniel from Terex KL. Hello. Hello, Daniel. And so I want to continue talking about Terex, but this time more on the challenges that you face because you have been here since when? Which uh, year 2009. Was 2009. And since then, from just KL, you have uh, somehow given birth to many other uh, Terex around Malaysia and also in Southeast Asia. Yep. Maybe you want to share with us uh, where, which are the cities that you have uh, redeveloped the model? Uh, so, uh, basically, there's a lot of Terexes around the world. As mm-hmm. I mentioned, there's uh, uh, about 120,000 Terexes uh, in in the world, uh, but there are some Terexes that are more interesting than others yeah. because, uh, like Yangon, uh, Terex Yangon just mm-hmm. uh, reappeared after a two years hiatus. <laughs> so, uh, Myanmar is this uh, fantastic uh, place that has been closed off for so many years. Yeah. Yet the the opening up of Myanmar has been fantastic, and uh, there's a lot of uh, interesting things that are going on over there. Mm-hmm. Uh, then uh, Terex Singapore this year is actually in conjunction with the SG50, they are celebrating their 50 years of independence. And or being away from Malaysia. Well, yeah, <laughs> independence. Uh, and they are putting up, they are, I know they've been planning uh, their event in uh, November for a long time, so I'm mm. um, looking forward to see what they oh, are. It would be great yeah. to see a lot of uh, Singaporeans. Um, on, uh, on the other hand, you know, um, having all these different TEDx, do you think TEDx is of a lesser quality than TED Talk? <laughs> we strive. I mean, because you you monitor uh, TEDx besides KL, yeah. And but you control the KL ones. Do Do you feel like the quality reduces because I'll, I'll it's, I'll not, I'll it's I'll beyond your purview? We always strive to actually hit a certain note that is mm-hmm. more global. Uh, our, the, unfortunately, our topics are really much locally focused, so mm-hmm. our, that it might not uh, strike a tone globally. Uh, that's something we always want to try to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, I. 
I would say it also depends on uh, there are some TEDx talks that are fantastic that mm-hmm. TED features uh, as uh, TED talk basically. Oh. And what they do, they'll invite uh, the speakers to actually go on the TED stage to represent the talk or they re-edit the talk to present as a TED talk. Oh, that's great. So th- you mean for TED talk, they actually monitor and observe yeah, they do. TEDx all over the world. Yep. And the good ones, they actually put it as part of their TED talk series. Yep. Yep. Is there any Malaysia topic? Not yet. Not uh, yet. So far, so far, there's uh, two Malaysians that presented on the TED stage, but uh, uh, we can improve a lot. More. <laughs> so uh, that's something that uh, we hope we hope to do basically, because at the at the end of the day, when uh, what we do, we we coach the uh, presenters, mm-hmm. and uh, it's quite challenging sometimes in terms of uh, they do not know the commitment they got in themselves into basically. Mm. What are the other challenges, uh, I guess, when it comes to organizing te- TEDx or even tech talk in general? Uh, so the other thing is we always, uh, especially a lot of the other TEDxers, I do encourage to curate the audience. Uh, mm. For TEDx scale, it's a what do you mean by curate the audience? Because the whole e- the whole event is not only the presenters; it's also who you meet in the mm. audience. And uh, for TEDx scale, we have that challenges, but so we try to bring in different interesting people, past presenters in our audience mm. that we encourage our audience to actually uh, mingle around. And the serendipitous nature of people mingling and talking. Uh, it, it's basically like exchanging ideas, ideas having sex, basically. Ah. So we want we want to see that, and our size actually uh, deters a lot. We want to find a better way to facilitate that, because uh, the so last finding a venue is a challenge. Finding a venue is a challenge. Finding a way to facilitate conversation between like four thousand over people is a challenge. <laughs> uh, and Malaysia's TEDx or TEDx KL is yeah. one of the biggest. Yes. At how, um, we are the third largest in the world. Uh, wow. Last, uh, we hit 4,200 people the, for the most recent TEDx. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, when it comes to the audience, I, I, I like that you say the word curate the audience because there are some people uh, that uh, have expressed that he has become too hipster. What do you think of that? Well, I, that's the that's the thing. I'm not exactly sure what the definition of hipster is, <laughs> but uh, I I, w- I was I would say there's also because uh, there's a wide variety of audience. Basically, some something we are too mainstream, something we are uh, too hipster, some just like the way it is. Uh, mm-hmm. So uh, it's really hard to cater to so many uh, different. But are the audience getting younger and younger? That is, well, people we, who we are young adults. <laughs> People who are young adults cannot find their own, you know, gang. <laughs> uh, it, it's, it's really for you to network and mingle. Mm-hmm. The, the youngest we ever had this year was a three months old baby. Really? <laughs> and the oldest that I know of, that uh-huh. I, I'm not exactly sure uh, who's the oldest, but the oldest that I personally know of because I, I spoke to the gentleman, he was an 87-year-old gentleman, basically. Wow. Yeah. And it still makes sense to him. No, oh, it definitely <laughs> makes sense. He's, he was... He he was actually quite excited about it. Then uh, I think it was uh, two thousand uh, uh, was uh, two thousand and thirteen. Mm-hmm. We had this uh, nine year old kid from Kuantan mm-hmm. dr- uh, sort of drag his whole family to come to that scale. I see. So it's actually quite a wide variety. So you have families, you have individuals, you have older uncle. Yeah. And so it's for you to really discover and uh, mingle around. Yeah, mm-hmm. you never know that. You never know. Uh, like for example, there's this uh, kid called uh, Zach Andreka. Mm. Uh, I think he's fifteen, fourteen. Mm-hmm. Uh, he developed a, a very low cost way to de- detect pancreatic cancer. I see. But that's not in Malaysia. But you never know who you might meet in TEDx scale. There, mm. there, there might be there might be philanthropists. There mm-hmm. might be uh, day to day young adults, uh, uh, professionals. There might be entrepreneurs. There might be uh, social make change makers and stuff like that. Uh. So, I, I, so, I so for you guys, you don't have like okay, they must come from a certain no. uh, group of people. No. They well, can the, be anyone. The the more mixed, the better. But the core is they have to promote an idea or they have to share. A no, certain they have to come with an open mind. Basically, open mind. They okay. basically have to come with an open mind because it's one whole day of uh, bombardment of different ideas and mm-hmm. different assault to your senses. So but is there is there any ideas that you for, for TEDx or for TED Malaysia is too extreme? Uh, TEDx KL. Um, I. 
do not know actually. Um, like politics. <coughs> So we don't touch politics because it's too close to our situation, but we mm-hmm. want to talk about maybe science of politics, mm-hmm. etc. That that. Uh, so you don't mind talking about politics, but more on a third party or scientific yeah. sort of perspective. Yeah, because we do not want to meddle the event with uh, politics. Mm-hmm. Uh, we uh, a lot of people look forward for, uh, especially TEDx scale as a as a as a as a window of hope to see mm. what Malaysia is capable of. And that's what we want to do. We want to showcase what Malaysia is capable of in terms of the goodness, the amazing people, the, the various uh, different projects of people who are dedicating their life in uh, solving <laughs> big ideas, big challenges, mm. basically. So what are the big ideas that you ha- uh, that people have shared at TEDx KL? Uh, big ideas. Because early on, you <coughs> share more on the, experience, the unique experiences of certain speakers. Okay. Um, I have a... This is a bit hard because I, I we we look through a lot of different uh, presenters and mm-hmm. we look through a different thing. Uh, like Asran Asran uh, Omar Rani, mm-hmm. uh, f- formerly from Irish, now with iFlix, mm-hmm. uh, he did share about the the uh, one of one of the things that Malaysia is always obsessed about five years planning. Yeah, uh, the fifth Malaysia plan or the Rancangan Malaysia. Every day we plan. Every day we plan. <laughs> but his talk was basically planning is obsolete. Ah, that's interesting. Yeah, it's not really a, a big, profound, uh, changing idea, but it's really a, a, a touch on the pulse of current society that... Mm. Especially that in Malaysia. Well, okay. not only in Malaysia, globally, because mm-hmm. there's, you can't plan. Mm. You, you can't think... You can't If you plan about a five years idea, a uh, five years plan, basically, mm-hmm. and you will, you will find within the first couple of months, it will be obsolete. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> so you need to come up with shorter iteration, mm. short pace there. So that was actually very profound, that was very profound to a lot of the audience there because it was something they never thought about. It was something that, that, like, for some people, that's, we take that as granted, but a lot of people don't take that as, that, that. Even, for example, uh, uh for example, Anne, Anne's case, mm-hmm. we never think about disability as a, a mental disability. Mm-hmm. How a mental disability is heavily discriminated that we didn't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that that is a that is that is a big idea basically. Yeah, that's great. So you didn't plan for TEDx to be like something like today, right? In two thousand nine. No, actually, no. <laughs> Your five year plan? <laughs> no, um, we we never we we don't have a five year plan. So in two thousand nine, you didn't imagine that okay, we are going to have like fifty something. <laughs> Uh, TEDx around uh, no, Malaysia. No, no, there wasn't. There wasn't any plan. Uh, in fact, the uh, TEDx scale almost died in the first year. Really? Yeah. Oh, this is a story that I didn't know. Why? What happened? Uh, so we we had Yasmin Ahmad as uh, mm-hmm. our presenter, and uh, so uh, it was basically her last uh, presentation. She was talking about charisma mm-hmm. and uh, in terms of in terms of uh, how do you how do you do movies and and uh why charisma matters a lot mm-hmm. and she and her passing actually affected us quite a fair bit mm-hmm. and uh we were not sure that we want to continue because it, it, if it it, it it didn't feel right then uh, we spoke to uh, one of her collaborator Pete Teo mm-hmm. and uh, Pete actually spoke at our second event and Pete actually encouraged us to uh fight on and uh, carry on as an honor to her and pretty much from the second event onwards is really we always look back at uh, how Yasmin although briefly touched us during Terex KL she just agreed out of the blue basically really yeah she was, and uh, it was your first that was our first yes and yeah. she didn't know what Ted was mm-hmm. she doesn't know it, it was her, it was her her partner was convinced her that like hey you have to do this <laughs> And we were so we were so fortunate, and yeah. uh, so it's essentially every single TEDx is really de- dedicated to to her in mm. some ways. Yeah. Interesting. Anyway, we'll ta- we'll talk <laughs> uh, after this song, and uh, more to come when it comes to the future of TEDx KL. Although we might not plan for the next five years, but we will talk about the future and also uh, what makes TEDx unique compared to other, um, I guess, uh, get together events or matchmaking events. You are now listening to Durian Asia, the voice of discovery and sharing. The Durian Heat, bringing big ideas and critical opinions in Southeast Asia. Hey, this is Arlene. You're back with me and, of course, with Daniel from TEDx KL. So, 
before I continue talking about the future of TEDx, will you be doing or have you done TEDx in other languages? Uh, there are not done by us. Oh, okay. Um, so there, there are a few. Um, the bigger one will be uh, TEDx Petaling Street, which is actually a Mandarin oh. TEDx. Uh, there are actually, I think, two TEDxes that will be in Bahasa. Oh, will be or had uh, been? Will be. Oh. Uh, so they will be fully conducted in Bahasa. Oh, basically. that's amazing. Yeah. Where is it? Uh, I yet to actually get the final. I don't think they have the approval yet. Okay. But it's under proposal, so I'm um, looking. Sungai yeah. sing it or something. <laughs> uh, Joho is actually correct, right? <laughs> Joho. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, I'm looking forward for that actually. Yeah. yeah. So, so there, there's actually this um, particular range of TED. Mm-hmm. X event called TEDx Saloon, which is actually smaller, hundred people, oh. uh, four four presenters. Wow! And th- yeah, so we will see a lot more of those basically mm-hmm. happening. And you have a few in Sabah Sarawak as well, right? So uh, KK, there's one, and then there's actually three licenses in uh, uh, Sarawak. Mm. With, yeah. Do do you spill over to Brunei as well? Uh, there is a there is a, a person that is running TEDx Brunei. Uh, that we met uh, when he came to TEDx KL last year. Then he was like, "Oh, I I really need to do this in Brunei." Mm. So uh, that there is going to be a TEDx Brunei. I basically. see. That's that's really cool. So you are looking at various languages. Uh, although you have done the Manju one, you're looking at. No, I I've, I've not done the Manju <laughs> one. The, oh, the, your. Uh, so it was one of our colleague, one uh, of your colleagues. Yeah, one of uh, uh, another license, Tadex Petaling Street. They have done the they have done ah, the Mandarin okay. version, and there's two Mandarin. I just remember there's actually two Mandarin. I see. Yeah. Okay. One is in Penang and one is in uh, Petaling Street. Okay, and then the future would be two Malay ones. There's two Malay yeah. ones that I know of that's coming out. Yeah. Uh, do they pitch it to you, or you ha- already have in mind like, okay, we want to expand this conversation? So I I don't to uh, people who I don't actively hunt uh, uh-huh. except for maybe in terms of looking at uh, Bonio, the, mm-hmm. because initially um, there wasn't any interest of people doing that. Uh, but I, I I try to encourage people to uh, organize one within their own community and mm-hmm. uh, get get. Uh, people within their own community to talk about different ideas and etc. Mm, that's very interesting. And for the future of TEDx, I know you don't plan since you heard this and stuff. But but in the future for TEDx, uh, what are you looking at? Uh, are you are you looking at uh, TEDx KL to have bigger, um, I guess, crop? Or you have you you are looking at maybe covering more controversial topics or what what are you looking at? Actually, honestly, I don't really have a good answer for you. Mm-hmm. Um, we know what we want to do from our learning from this year. We want to find a way to up the quality, mm-hmm. especially in terms of the presentation. And, and this year is infinity and beyond, yes, right? Yes, infinity and beyond. And so we are trying. We were Was it beyond your expectation? Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's somewhat. Somewhat certain talks were really beyond my expectation, uh, and. Uh, but I, I think there's always room for improvement. There's a, a lot of ways that we can improve and do better and uh, maybe find different ways to actually create more interactivity and et cetera. And uh, looking, I, I think the venue does play a big role in terms mm-hmm. of setting the tone of the event. And so we are now in the midst of actually hunting mm-hmm. down the next venue because uh, yeah, stadium, uh, stadium portrayal that we have used this year is going to be uh, under renovation for two years. Mm-hmm. So we will not have access. To and the unique thing about uh, TEDx is the the venue is not just for the audience to sit down and uh, you know he- see what the speakers want to uh, s- say, but you also have spaces for exhibition, right? Yeah. So um, th- so. This is something we've been. I, I think this year we did a bit better than last year. Mm-hmm. So we always have exhibition space, but uh, it's limited, subjected to the venue. I see. So, but this year we managed to bring in a whole bunch of uh, makers. Mm. So uh, we have people who build uh, uh, drones from uh, ice cream sticks. Wow. Uh, that basically self-control drones. Uh, we have like uh, electric skateboards. Uh, people who actually did. Uh, people who actually did uh, like 3D print uh, built 3D printers. So we brought in a whole bunch of maker communities over in in Malaysia to showcase some of their work basically. Mm-hmm. Talking about makers, right? Because I think entrepreneur is one of the hot the hottest word in Malaysia right now or, or if not all over Southeast Asia everyone wants to be I an entrepreneur <laughs> yeah, everyone wants to be an entrepreneur and everyone wants to make that uh, to come up with that billion dollar idea uh, what you what do you think of uh, places or venues like uh, TEDx do you, do you think it's a great place for people to 
or for inv- even investors or the audience to get to know, oh, this is the next. Uh, it's a good place idea. to actually discover ideas, mm-hmm. I would say. Uh, but it's not a, it's a, a TEDx is not an entrepreneurial mm-hmm. uh, focus event. It's really an ideas uh, ideas platform. Mm-hmm. So uh, if you have a hypothesis or thesis about certain thing, that is always the best place to present mm-hmm. and showcase what you are doing. Um, oh, this year, this year there was a uh, something that fascinated me in TED was a 3D printer that print about 100 times faster than current 3D printer. So, define 100 times faster for so someone who never even seen so a 3D see 3D printer. You see, normal 3D printer is actually very slow. It's just like, uh, because it, it, it's actually not 3D printer, it's multiple 2D printing. So, you ah. print layer by layer and layer. Yeah, the one that you see on YouTube, right? Yeah, yeah. so it's very slow. It's a very excruciating thing. And you have this, like, it, it's not uh, particularly smooth and etc. Mm. So, there's this, um, there's this talk uh, that happened in Vancouver in February that they created a, a new form of 3D printer mm-hmm. that it behaves more like if you remember Terminator 2 yeah you remember the uh, T1000 which is actually liquid metal oh yes so it behaves more like that so it grows out from the puddle wow that's and, so cool and it's really fast basically so yeah. we are so it becomes like it's like an instant mole made yes. up no, yeah. fr- without even a mole. Without even a mole, yeah. basically. And so you can, with that thing, you can actually create even more complex and more uh, structurally sound uh, structures mm-hmm. with 3D printers because there are limitations in terms of uh, the structural integrity and etc. I see. Yeah. So when are you going to have similar topics <laughs> discussed in we, wa- we are always hunting <laughs> up for next the next big thing, uh, the next mm-hmm. technology. This year we had uh, Dr. Armani mm-hmm. uh, Salim. She was a former NASA researcher. Her her grant research grant in NASA was like 2.8 million US dollar when she returned to Malaysia to a local institution to teach as an assistant professor. Mm-hmm. Her research grant was uh, how much? Uh, Seven thousand. Seventy thousand ringgit. Oh, that's a huge difference. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and uh, like buying a Ferrari and buying your country. <laughs> no, so she was actually initially. Secondhand. <laughs> she was initially quite depressed, and uh, but she actually took inspiration from the fact of uh, this is a constraint. Uh-huh. So her constraint is then she had to figure out how that she go break, uh, break the barriers to push the limits. Basically, in mm-hmm. terms of she came up with uh, uh, she found ways to actually do this concept called frugal innovation. What is that? Frugal innovation is this concept where you are doing innovation, you're doing uh, research work or innovation, but it's not that you're being cheap, you're trying to be cost effective. So with really limited budget, how can you achieve something similar? Mm-hmm. So she, uh, because of that, she was actually, she came up with this, uh, she and her students came up with uh, a way to detect uh, whether a packaging is spoiled or whether it's tampered with using cabbages. <laughs> yes. So the cabbage will change color. The the strip of cabbage with the enzyme will change color uh-huh. to detect whether the food is spoiled or something like that. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, and so she she's doing a lot of she's doing a lot of stuff that to push the fact that innovation to innovate you don't have to have a lot of money. Mm. You can try to achieve a lot with minimum budget. Like f- uh, for example, she was doing a project that requires a clean room that costs uh, like. Uh, like tens of thousands like hundred over thousand dollars but uh-huh. she don't have she had to figure out another way to do it so she was like u- utilizing the idea of using pencil as a carbon to do uh, carbon circuitry basically that's very very innovative and out of the world I guess <laughs> yeah but but it's interesting to see that um, there's a lot of um, because you mentioned that she used to work in NASA that means that there's a lot of really talented Malaysian outside of Malaysia no, there's a lot of Talented and amazing Malaysians in Malaysia <laughs> as well. <laughs> yes, and that's 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 always the case because mm-hmm. whenever uh, every year we were like, oh, how do we how do we go on top this? How do we go and find? Yeah, this yeah. Thing? That that's go- that goes back to my question. Like, how do you actually hunt for these people? Do you go on f- social media? Do you ask around? Yeah, we do ask around. It's a it's a massive. Yeah. It's a re- for us. It's a very really massive uh, uh, long term research in terms of looking at different presenters and etc. And how do you how do you place them like do you give like a one year period of hunting people or what uh, it depends because we do maintain a mm. list that we want and mm. uh, we do maintain a list of people that we uh, observe and we monitor that uh, potentially could fit in in the future mm-hmm. but at the, at the end of the day also it's uh, really about uh, recommendation and people sometimes people nominated themselves mm. and then uh, 
like uh, for example one year uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Zafri actually uh, mm. who's actually coming up with a way to um, it, it's still a very early stage in animal testing in terms of uh, curing brain tumour with uh, I can't remember exactly what is that actually chickens chickens chicken eggs is it? yeah you mean telur ayam? telur ayam <laughs> To, to, to cure cancer? Yeah, uh, I can't remember exactly what's the mechanics, but that he has a very early stage uh, animal testing I model. See. Now uh, you're encouraging every Malaysians to eat eggs every morning. No, no, it's not. <laughs> no, it's just, about, kidding it's not it, <laughs> just kidding about it. Just kidding about it. But, you know, uh, it, it, uh, f- but from there, you, you, you sort of, I guess, share the hope that Malaysians are not all, like, you know, obsolete. We, we, we have a lot of really... Oh, yeah, age. We are actually moving. Yeah, we we are moving really, really fast forward. You know, uh, I mean, we always talk about the West. You know, they they have their own Silicon Valley. They they have all these billion dollar ideas, or they have all these um, people who have you know put humanity in at the center. But actually, we do have such. We people. are not. We, I have to say, we are not there yet. But mm-hmm. there are people in Malaysia that are pushing the limits. Actually, mm-hmm. uh, the the famous quote is the the future is. Uh, future is here, but it's not evenly distributed. <laughs> so there, there, there are people who are actually at the bleeding edge of uh, of certain research, and uh, and some of them are Malaysian, some some of them are doing really amazing stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. You, I, uh, we have this uh, uh, one of our speakers on our fourth event, uh, Kyrie, who's mm-hmm. actually involved in this project called Project Sina. Mm. The Sina project. Oh yeah. Are uh, you familiar with that? Oh, I'm familiar with yeah. that. So they have uh, they they are doing using open data mm-hmm. to actually uh, look at governance in Malaysia, basically mm. whether is there's corruption trackers or there's a project Pengawas where they monitor attendance for a uh, member of parliament. And you'd be surprised. Yeah. Who is who are the absentees? All people are sleeping. <laughs> All people are sleeping. <laughs> yeah. They they might be there physically, but they are sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so we get a lot of this kind of very interesting things that uh, that because constantly there are people who want to do stuff, to want to improve and want to push limits, mm-hmm. and we see that a lot. And uh, and at the end of the day, that's that's why we keep want to do this because mm-hmm. uh, we think we 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 think we can actually promote some of these ideas, help them to jump to the next level. That's true. That that's exactly what I would imagine. TED Talk, TEDx, Malaya, KL, and TEDx all over would be, and it's really interesting. Uh, and and all the best for TEDx, KL. Hopefully, you know, in the future, more and more controversial and interesting ideas can come out from uh, the event. And I've been to TEDx, so I can say that you know, I I really fall in love. Although I I feel that you know we can push a bit more forward so that TED Talk can somehow download and put it in India. <laughs> Website. <laughs> yeah, we want we want to put emulation on the test stage. <laughs> but anyway, thank you very much. Thanks for coming to Durian ASEAN. Thank you. Thanks for having me.